I'm here with Doris Lum and she's volunteering with Remote Area Medical and the Lions Club. And Remote Area Medical, here we go, Richmond Panole. A remote area medical is here at the Oakland Coliseum providing free mostly dental and vision care. They also provide chiropractic care and acupuncture. And so far today they've seen about 661 patients. People get in line at about midnight, maybe earlier. They get a number at 3.30 and then they're seen at 5. And I've already met a number of people who've been here all day long. So Doris, you've been volunteering in the vision area. That is correct. Uh, talk about what your experience has been like today. I know you, you do this a lot, but what did you experience today? Who did you meet? Well, I haven't done it a lot, but I'm, this is the second time I've come to RAM, okay. uh, RAM Oakland, and we're at the Oakland Coliseum. Well, I don't know what they call it now, but O Coliseum or OCO or some yeah. crazy thing. And then I did the one in Sacramento last year, and I did here now in Los Angeles, and so I'm repeating uh, Oakland uh, with RAM this year. And uh, I'm working in the vision department or vision area, and what we do is provide a uh, complete eye exam. We start off with a eye chart. We do uh, an auto refracting on a machine that kind of detects the lenses of your eyes. Then there's the doctors that come in that do a full eye exam, and they do um, what do you call dilation. From there, the patient goes to the office to get frames and frames with lenses, so it's a complete set. So within three hours of the time that they complete the exam and select their lens, they have eyeglasses, walks out with a complete pair. Mm -hmm. So um, it's a good deal for them, and many of them have not seen before, and some of them have vision, many of us, but not many, several, have had uh, visions over 200. Wow. So 20 over 200 in both eyes. And so that means, I'm going to try to zero in on the eye chart, that means they cannot see the big E, right? right. And you've seen a few people today that cannot see the big E Correct. and they drove here. Correct. They drove here. One guy drove here in his truck. He said, uh, oh, I'm glad I'm out here. Thank you very much for coming. However, uh, he didn't say however. He said, I, I came here and uh, I'm glad I got my glasses. Now, the situation was is that he drove here not able to see, mm. at, according to what I checked, at over 200, 20 over 200. And uh, imagine he was driving next to me in the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I've been in the waiting room kind of talking to people for a couple hours. Some people were screaming because it's the first time that they can see. That's right. Many haven't seen them. But these are the, what I consider very uh, cream of the crop, meaning that they're willing to go out and experiment mm -hmm. and try to get the things that they really need, like eyeglasses mm -hmm. or medical care, dental extractions, uh, uh, chiropractics, uh, medical care, meaning they, last year they gave immunizations. I don't think they're doing this year. They give uh, women's eye, uh, breast exams mm -hmm. and some of the women care, other women care uh, Type of things I don't remember all the details, and including um, acupuncture. Yeah. So it, it's, amazing, it's amazing, amazing what they have here at Ram. Yeah. And all I gotta do is say thank you, Mr. Brock. Uh, this <laughs> yeah. is really beyond beyond the call of duty. Now you've been to Mexico. Uh, I did to go to Mexico. Giving out free glasses. We I went on Lions in Sight program mm -hmm. for, to Mexico. I think it was like four years ago, five mm -hmm. years ago. And we went to a village up in the highlands. The Lions Club there treated us to a four-day stay in which we did uh, distribution and eye care for I don't know how many villagers. We, we, I think we accommodated like four or five hundred villagers for the three days. And what we did was take glasses that were unusable in America. And they're not like they're unusable. They're just that we can't reuse them here in America. So we took the clean, dried, washed, all the kind of things, sanitized, measured the lenses, and then we took them overseas. And I think they took, I don't know how many thousands of them. And they went up to the village, uh, tested all these people as best we could, and gave them their glasses. And they may not be good in America. I mean, they're not new and exciting. But these people had ne many of them had never seen seen anybody. The the woman that I one of them I had was 75 years old. She her son take, took her there and said, oh, "Mom, I think you need some glasses." Okay, so we did the whole nine yards with her, put a pair of glasses on, and the woman just couldn't stop saying, seeing, doing. And this was the first time in 75 years she saw her own son. Wow. She just stared at her own son with tears in her eyes. Just couldn't believe who he was. 
and then uh, she says her, her grandchildren are at home. And so, so to me, it is so rewarding to see somebody see for the uh, first time well, in their life. It's, it's the woman I met earlier. She could she she and her daughter can't drive at night. It's for the first time they're not walking around in a blurry world. Blurry world, and but they don't in, know. And this is but in now, Oakland, California. In Oakland, California. So that's what I wanted to ask you. You've been socially active for a long time. Did you think you'd ever see this in the United no. States? No. This is remarkable that America has really declined in medical care. I mean, think about it. Other th- what we used to call third world, like Kenya or China or Japan. Uh, hey, they've grown up as a country. They've grown up to be what I would consider like young adults. They've grown up out of their infancy of nothing. And now we, as, a, as America, are like old grandparents. We're, we're declining. What happened to us? What are we thinking of? What's, why? But Mr. Brock, who heads up this RAM thing, has got the right idea. We've got to show that we have compassion. Really, people that care about human beings, their condition, and also we can do something mm-hmm. to make it make that change. Mm-hmm. Like this uh, particular clinic, this eye clinic, uh, there's donations of lenses, mm-hmm. uh, eyeglass, new eyeglasses now. I mean, we can't go used in here in America, but new eyeglass frames uh, and all the materials that go with it. So I don't think they're doing contacts, but they're doing pretty much everything else. You can get a prescription for it, then you have to go out and get it filled. Right. But here at this clinic, we do everything else. You know, and just uh, we have just a couple more minutes. You, you earlier were talking about the importance of the media coming here to tell these stories, and not just to come and grab a photo for the six o'clock news and leave, but to actually talk to the people, talk to the volunteers. Well, I wish. What? I wish. I wish that the media would pay more attention to the real human part of it. What do they do? How can they help these people? It's not this Obamacare, like you know, the Republicans versus the Democrats. I think the Republicans have got it wrong, 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 wrong. They don't need to fight against Obama. They need to work with him to make America strong again. So what do you want people to know about what you're seeing here and the changes that we need to make? Well, the changes have to be genuine, of course, you know, the heartfelt kind of things. But also, they they have to show that there's a way to do this. It doesn't cost a lot of money. I don't think there's a heck of a lot of money involved. All the doctors at this RAM clinic, all the volunteers are not paid a dime. They come here free will to spend time to make something good happen out of their experience or their education or with the use of just being human. So, you know, I just think that uh, there's more to it. There's just more to it. There's got to be. I see all the people that are so happy here after they've gotten a pair of glasses or their child says, Mommy, I can see. What's, what's that? Oh, that's good. And they take it for granted like, oh, it should have happened a long time ago. But it doesn't. Right. And again, it doesn't. we're talking families with children who've been waiting in line since midnight or even 10 o'clock last night. Right. Correct. And they were in line all night. Right. And then they're here all day. Correct. And I saw a bunch of kids just sleeping in their chairs earlier because well, they've, been <laughs> they've been up all night. Well, Doris, thank you so much. Well, good luck to you and report it as good news and positive news. I don't want to hear the reporter come out, take my picture from the back, <laughs> and then run away. They don't, I, they've missed the whole point I know, of it's being so here. What is this? I know, honestly, all you have to do is walk up to two people and you've got an amazing story. Everybody really, has a story. Everybody has everybody a story. Everybody has, whether they can see or not see. I mean, a heartbreaking story, I have to say, but also an amazing story. Doris Lum is a volunteer with Remote Area Medical, and she's with Lions International, Richmond, and Pinal. Thank you, Doris. Richmond Pinal Lions Club. Thank you very much. District 4C3. Okay, thank thank you. you.